Hi everybody, welcome to Scuba Diving Magazine. Today's liverboard guide is sponsored by the Explorer Ventures Liverboard Diving Fleet and I'm going to talk about them in a little bit. So this guide is going to break down what to expect on a liverboard, such as what facilities there are likely to be on board the vessel, how you should prepare for a liverboard, what to bring, what you don't need to bring, and some general do's and don'ts about liverboard diving. So Liverboards are the perfect way to really crank up your dive log numbers and build your scuba diving experience because you're in and out of the water more frequently than day boats and you're surrounded by a lot of other divers for the entire week talking about scuba diving. Whether you're traveling as a family group or you're traveling just all by yourself, you are going to find a new group of friends to go diving with and socialize around the dinner time. So yeah, if you're just traveling by yourself, liverboards are great. So what are you likely to find on or in a liverboard? So a liverboard is typically a large motor yacht with multiple cabins, open air resting and sunbathing decks, as well as a dedicated dive deck at the back. On some of the fancier vessels, you may also find hot tubs, photography studios, and even more. The exact layout and the deck count can vary between vessels, but the fundamentals are usually the same. From top to bottom, the very top deck is most often the sun deck. This is where a lot of divers work on their tans between dives because wetsuits don't give the best tan lines. And the sun deck or the fly deck is usually a great place to get a 360 view of where you are as well as get some fresh air. Some divers even like to sleep up here under the stars if the weather is nice enough instead of down in their cabins. So yeah, if you really want that kind of experience, liverboards are good for that. Down a staircase or a ladder, depending on the boat, is a more covered open air area at the back of the boat where most divers tend to relax between dives. It's typically covered up to protect you from the sun beaming down on top of you, but it's still open to the fresh air. Comfortable seating and tables let you relax and chat with other divers, and it's not unusual to find someone sleeping here between dives or reading a good book, editing photos on their laptop, listening to music. You can also find some cabins on this floor, uh, which are nice because they're, they're high up and they're away from engine noise. Down one deck and you tend to find the main deck, which is split into two sections. The central inside space is an air conditioned common space where you typically have dinner, dive breathings. Uh, some vessels also have areas with tables for sorting logbooks and photographs, even TVs for presentations, things like that. You can take part in some scuba diving cert courses on board during your holiday. If you want, you don't have to, obviously, uh, but if you do, you can earn yourself another cert card whilst you're on holiday. Then outside at the back of the boat is the dive deck. Here is where you'll have your own cylinder on a bench and your cylinder will be topped up where it is between dives. So you don't need to swap cylinders over or anything. The crew just fills it up when it's still attached. All you need to do is just unscrew your regulators after the dive so the crew knows to top up that cylinder. You will also have some kind of a crate normally underneath your cylinder under the bench for the rest of your dive gear like your mask and your weights and things to, to just keep the deck nice organized and tidy. Right at the very back of the boat close to the water level is often a wide and flat deck where you make giant stride entries into the water or you're going to board smaller boats that can zip you to harder to reach dive spots where the big liverboards just can't go. Hinged on the very edge will be one or two dive ladders so that you can climb out of the water with your fins still on straight back onto the liverboard. If you head back inside on this deck, you usually find a staircase that goes down to the lower deck where you find more cabins because most of these liverboards can host upwards of 28 guests in twin and double cabins. Each cabin has some storage space beds to sleep in from twins and doubles to king size beds on some boats and many 
also have ensuite toilets and showers and the rooms are air conditioned as well if you want to cool off and have a snooze. So cabins do have charging points to recharge batteries, but it's safer to charge your electronics in dedicated charging areas so that they are always supervised. Boat power supplies are a little bit different to a normal homes and it's important that you never leave anything charging unattended. So as I mentioned at the start, this guide is sponsored by the Explorer Ventures Liverboard Diving Fleet and that's perfect for today's video because they have a full fleet of liverboard vessels all over the world in all of the top diving destinations. The list starts in Sabah and St Kitts, which is in the northeastern Caribbean, where their Caribbean Explorer 2 will take you to all of the best diving spots with a good range of local species. This itinerary has been running for over 35 years and divers return time and time again for the diversity of diving and land tour options. It really does have something for everybody. Then over to Turks and Caicos, uh, also in the Caribbean, where the Turks and Caicos Explorer 2 will show you around deep wall sites that are popular with local shark species. This liverboard is well known for its friendly award-winning crew. Then Explorer Ventures has two vessels that covers the waters around Indonesia. You have the Blue Manta Explorer and the larger White Manta Explorer. Both have huge rooms to relax between dives and explore Indonesia's coral triangle. Good for rare macro life as well as some of the really big larger species. In the western Pacific just east of the Philippines you'll see a small island nation of Palau where the Black Pearl Explorer sets off from. The Black Pearl Explorer is a 151 foot long vessel that was built to exceed the very highest standards of the scuba diving industry including a recompression chamber on board and the diving includes countless sharks, wall dives, and a lot of World War II wrecks. Explorer Ventures has two vessels to explore the Galapagos Islands, either on their Tuberon Explorer or their newly refurbished Humboldt Explorer. I'm actually planning a Galapagos diving special video coming up in a few weeks, so stay tuned for that. Diving Galapagos is just very unique and gets a dedicated video where I can really talk about all of its benefits. The Maldives is another island nation that is well known for its dive sites and large underwater species, and that's where the Emperor Explorer is the epitome of luxury. With huge comfortable rooms, uh, this liverboard has its own smaller dive boat that travels along with it to visit some of those smaller, harder to reach dive sites and to give you plenty of space to kit up. The Grand Sea Explorer will take you to all corners of the Red Sea, which is well known for its glorious shipwrecks and reefs like the Thistlegorm, as well as Brothers Islands, Daedalus Reef and Elphinstone Reef. Before you arrive, if there's anything that you need, such as rental equipment or dietary requirements, it's very important to let them know as soon as possible because as soon as you set sail, it can be very hard to source replacement equipment or suitable food because you're in the middle of the ocean. So if you do have food allergies or specific diets, talk with the operator when booking as soon as possible. Also check your dive gear well before your trip. It's good to get things serviced and been on a check dive with it already before a big trip to ensure that everything is working properly. Check things like your mask straps, fin straps for any kind of wear and tear because you don't want it to break on the trip because again, you're out in the middle of the ocean. It's hard to get spare parts. It's better to source a spare part before you leave. So just have a good look over all of your dive kit and make sure nothing needs replacing. Day one when you arrive is usually a bit of an admin day. You arrive with all of your bags and the crew and the dive guides meet and greet you. They ask you to fill out some paperwork. It's the usual paperwork and they'll want to see your cert cards, usually your higher certification, uh, nitrox and any relevant specialities for that particular itinerary. You don't have to bring them all, but they only want to see those ones. Before you carry all of your kit and bags up the stairs or down the stairs to your cabin, leave your dive gear on the dive deck. That's where it's going to end up, so there's no sense in dragging it backwards and forwards. Once you've unpacked your clothes and your toiletries in your cabin, then it's a good idea to set up your BCD and your regulators on a cylinder and check that they work. 
it's better to find out there and then if something is wrong with your dive gear than when you're like getting ready for the first dive. If you let the dive guides know that something is missing or broken, then they can source one for you, or at least they should be able to. If you've ordered any rental equipment, now is a good time to try it on if it's a wetsuit or whatever, uh, or just check that it's working properly. Depending on the vessel, you can store your empty kit bag in your room or the crew will just secret it away for the trip so that it's nice and out of the way. You'll have a meal and an overall safety briefing about the vessel, where things are, things to be careful about, how the trip is going to be organised. And one of the usual safety points is that inside areas are dry areas. So after the dive, make sure you're completely dry before going indoors because the floors are very polished and they're incredibly slippery when wet so do be careful of that and depending on the itinerary you may stay in dock for the very first night uh, and that gives the crew to just restock and get in anything special before you actually set sail the following day. Mornings are usually early on board with a knock on your cabin door about 6am. The first dive of the trip is a check dive. It's normally done somewhere safe so that you can check your gear and your weighting is somewhere nice and shallow. The dive guides can assess everybody's skill level and at the end you normally have to show them that you can send up a DSMB by yourself without getting tangled up, so prepare yourself for that. How most days on a liverboard go, you wake up at 6am, you then head for a dive briefing, you get kitted up either in like two separate groups so there's more space on the actual just deck uh, you then get kitted up and you go for that morning dive you get back afterwards you dry yourself off sign back in on the log sheet and then you head for breakfast relax a little bit before you hear a bell the crew rings the ship's bell to signal a dive briefing or a meal and they alternate so dive meal dive meal morning dive breakfast Dive before lunch, lunch, afternoon dive, dinner, and sometimes a night or an evening dive. Meals are typically buffet-style choices of both local and more familiar dishes, but some vessels can cater more fancy dishes from time to time. Uh, drinks are available. You usually have water coolers on most decks, so try to bring a water bottle that you can top up. Fridges are also dotted around each deck to keep your drinks cold, and sometimes they have some fizzy drinks on the inside that can be included, but usually you just tally uh, and pay for it at the end of the trip, whatever you've consumed. Some boats also have alcohol on board. If that's your thing, have a drink, just be sensible, because remember you're there to go diving and drinking and diving do not mix. Now, you don't need to go on every single dive if you don't feel up to it. Some itineraries can be upwards of five dives a day, so there's nothing wrong with skipping a dive. There's gonna be plenty others. Just let the dive guides know that you're skipping the dive. As I mentioned earlier, most vessels have a roster log sheet of each diver, and at the beginning of each dive, if you're diving on nitrox, you write down your nitrox mix, you sign it, and then after the dive, you write down your maximum depth and your dive time. If you end up skipping a dive for whatever reason without telling the crew, they'll look at that sheet and they may think that you're still in the water by yourself because you haven't signed back in. And if you decide to go snorkeling or just swimming off of the boat, let them know so that they can be sure that you've come back on board before they leave. You don't want to be left in the water. When it comes to the very end of your trip, you go on your last dive. When you get back, break down all of your gear, give it a good rinse with fresh water. Boats will often have showers or some kind of hose. Some have dunk tanks with fresh water for camera equipment. Then set it up to drip dry as early as possible so that it's very dry and ready to pack away. And with your BCD, just make sure there's no water inside of that bladder. You don't want to be paying to carry that water back in your luggage allowance. The itineraries are usually organized so that you have plenty of time to decompress before you leave and need to get on an airplane. What should you bring and what shouldn't you bring? So. If you have all of your own dive equipment, that's great. Bring as much as you can. The only things that you don't really need to bring are a cylinder and lead weights. 
they're going to be on the boat waiting for you. Your mask, your fins, your regulators, your BCD, dive computer, wetsuit, depending on conditions, weight belt. Some boats have a weight belt for you, but if you've got a nicer one or integrated weights, then obviously bring that. All, all of the basics. A dive torch is a good idea, especially if there's a chance that you're going on any night dives uh, in any shipwrecks or caverns because you want to be able to see in the dark. A DSMB and a spool or a reel is required. If you don't have one, you're going to need one. And if you turn up without one, they're going to make you rent one. And a reef hook is a good idea, especially in places like the Maldives where there can be a lot of currents. And again, you're going to need to rent one from the boat if you don't have one. Spare parts for your dive gear can save a dive if something does break. So bring what you can. Don't go nuts, but bring any spare parts for any part of your kit that may fail that you can fix, like a, a mask strap and fin straps. If you feel like they're likely to break because they're looking a bit old, then bring a spare. Liverboards often have basic toolkits that you can borrow tools from. They'll also have a nitrox analyzer as well if they offer nitrox. Some vessels also supply you with a locator beacon to alert the vessel in an emergency on the surface exactly where you are so they can find you more easily. So that's kind of cool. Pack your normal toiletries. But when it comes to clothes, liverboards are quite relaxed. Bring a good pair of shoes for traveling, but on board you're typically barefoot the entire time. Some trips you do visit islands on like mainland and you may need footwear there. So you can either wear your traveling shoes or your dive boots if you really need to, if you're trying to save space. You don't need a wide range of clothing though. No one is gonna think twice if you're wearing the same t-shirt more than once. And most divers are just in board shorts or just beach wear, except around the dinner table where they throw a t-shirt over the top. A hoodie or a sweater is also good to bring on most trips, even if you're going to the tropics. As you acclimatize to the weather, the air conditioning indoors, repetitive dives and late nights, it can get quite cold even in warm climates and especially if the wind is blowing through so it's quite nice to have something like a warm hoodie just to throw over the top of everything. You don't need to bring a towel. Boats typically have indoor and outdoor towels supplied for you for use in the cabin and for use out of the cabin for drying yourself between dives and sunbathing. Remember to bring your cert cards, as I mentioned earlier, and any medical paperwork that you may need for any medical conditions, as well as insurance details as well. You usually need to uh, give them your insurance details to book the trips, but it does help if you have all of your own information with you. Charging cables and replacement batteries for anything electrical as well as some cash so that you can tip the crew at the end of the trip. A lot of people forget the cash and then they feel really guilty. While on board, you're typically off the grid completely. You won't get very much phone signal. And whilst boats can have Wi-Fi built in, it, it won't be particularly fast and it may disappear, especially when you're further out to sea. So don't expect constant, complete coverage whilst you're out at sea. So prepare people that, you know, I'm not going to be able to be contacted uh, whilst I'm away. Uh, they do have sat phones, but it will cost you. For more information about Explorer Ventures, uh, their liverboards and their dive green environmental management policy that ensures a long term sustainability of both the coral reefs, the ecosystems where they operate, the recreational scuba diving industry and their local livelihoods. Just click on the link in the description below or the one that's just popped up in this corner here. If you're watching this on YouTube, their website breaks down each of their diving destinations, the vessels in their fleet, as well as a frequently asked questions as well for all of your information that you may need about booking on one of their liverboards. If you're interested in that Galapagos diving video that's coming up, then remember like and share to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel. And if you have any questions about liverboards, then pop them down in the comment section under this video. Otherwise, head over to our website, scubadivermag.com for more scuba diving content. Thank you for watching everybody. And of course, safe diving.